what's going on nerd mixes a pluses a pluses nerd mixes just all nerdum in in the universe or should i say the multiverse uh you already know what we're here for you can see it right here in the overlay we're here to talk about what if and that amazing episode in which was episode eight which probably just topped the t'challa and dr strange supreme episodes for me um especially coming off of the party thor episode uh this episode didn't pull any punches got right into it for something that we what i'm not even gonna say we i'm gonna say me i'm gonna speak from my standpoint this is something that i thought wouldn't happen until the final episode but for this to be the penultimate episode leading up to what is going to be the conclusion of this first season of what if they did the damn thing and as much as i wanted each one of these episodes to stay independent of one another um the fact that they're all tying into something to end this first season um is very marvel and and it is very entertaining and i'm glad that we actually got it happening this way rather than just eight to nine random episodes that don't tie into anything so i'm 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 really really geeked about that so this episode is basically titled what if ultron won now anybody who has read the age of ultron comics know that the age of ultron um avengers movie didn't necessarily go by the way the comics went because the comics itself were you know ultron from the future ended up being able to take over vision in the past and was able to create a whole bunch of like ultron bots and end up just taking over i mean i think one of the favorite panels that i remember from that comic is watch just looking at a defeated captain america with a broken shield and just all hope being lost and what was going on and we got something similar to this except this ultron also has a hold of the infinity stones that he took from thanos that thanos just he just one shot at thanos it was like interesting and then he just shot a laser and just cut thanos in half and then just took the infinity stones because he already had the mind stones so he ended up taking the other ones so uh this episode broke a couple of rules that that we're not used to um we're used to especially in the mcu live action or in the comics themselves is that the the stones don't work in other universes like like the the, the stones of that universe work in that universe so if you take them to another universe they're they're not necessarily supposed to work or a multiverse different plane different earth they're not they're not supposed to work but we saw them work in multiple different planes of existence throughout this episode, especially between the fight with the Watcher and Ultron himself. So it, it, it it's a compelling thing on if this is something because they said some of what happens in this what if could become canon. It, it's always up for grabs on whether it become canon or not. So is this something that they're using in order for this to become canon in order to use it? because now i'm starting to feel like more of the doctor strange that we got from the doctor strange supreme the steve uh the evil steve um stephen strange this could this be the stephen strange that we end up with in the spider-man no way home there's so, there's so many different ways that everything in marvel is leading like every you always have people saying that marvel is real simple and they're using the same formula and i don't believe that i think marvel storytelling is just done well and they're just so far ahead and what we're doing to now we're getting to the point where we're having to guess what's canon what's not canon what's going on and i feel like to me that just feels like good writing um in general this episode was hands down uh my favorite of the season so far um we'll see if the final episode can top this but the whole thing with uh nat and clint and them being the last survivors after ultron won and was able to get access to the nuclear codes it was actually able to set off the nukes to 
you know what I'm saying, destroy the world and silence the world. Then he found out there were people in space, there were other universes. So he he went he went through the whole universe and destroyed everything and had it quiet and then found some type of consciousness when it came to it and understood that uh, there was somebody there. So this is the second being that has been able to sense the watcher and understand what's going on. And eventually was after he got the the stones from Thanos was ever to transcend into, you know what I'm saying, a different multiverse. But the interesting thing in this is that Clint and Natasha survived. And I really feel like the mission that they're on is going to, you know what I'm saying, have something be very important with the climax of this first season. I'm kind of hoping this first season doesn't end. Like, like the story carries on. Like they don't finish everything and then something next season has to be that that would be pretty interesting wouldn't it if if we get if we get left with a cliffhanger instead of a proper ending i wonder how you guys feel about that i think that would be pretty interesting but she has to go back and uh tapping into uh i think that was winter soldier when they have to go and you see stuff starting to tie in together you know what i'm saying with the other movies so that you got natasha and you got clint and they're trying to survive in like a every time i say post-apocalyptic i think zombies but that that's technically not the only type of post-apocalyptic you know what i'm saying version of a show or something you can have so uh a post-apocalyptic version of earth where like they're under constant surveillance by ultron centuries um they're they're on a mission to try to basically get their own ai to counteract what's going on with ultron because uh, ultron is ultimately just an ai he's artificial intelligence if you can get something that can override him or something that's more powerful than him then of course you can get a way to stop him so it, it that's interesting to me in the way that you know what i'm saying that goes but first off you know how we do let's get into this voice cast of course we got jeffrey wright as the watcher he's been the watcher all season you know what i'm saying and doing an incredible job you had jeremy renner return as hawkeye you had late bell come back as black widow you know we had no scarlett johansson uh toby jones as zola benedict cumberbatch did come back as dr strange uh you had josh keaton step in for steve rogers mick ringwart was uh tony stark iron man and Alexa Daniels is Kev, Carol Danvers. So uh, remi we're missing a couple. We're missing a couple. But uh, everything's going to be, you know what I'm saying, all cool. And James Spader actually took over as Ultron. You know what I'm saying? And what that was going on. So you get Natasha and Clint trying to get Armin Zola, you know, who had his mind uploaded into a computer, to find him in order to use him in some way to be able to try to attack or stop you know what i'm saying the ultron uh centuries or to be able to start to be able to disconnect ultron for what was going on to make it easy for them to go so while they're on that mission you have ultron i guess hunting down who was supposed to be the watcher in order to try to find him and then he ends up finding more multiverses now yes natasha and natasha and clint do end up getting zola they upload his consciousness into one of the centuries um they try to send a wave to shut down ultron but ultron isn't in that universe so that so they're like they're trying to figure that out but at the same time you have this amazing scene with them trying to run away from like a hundreds of centuries and you get clint barton who is basically tired of fighting he's tired of running and he ends up sacrificing himself for natasha and zola to be able to finish the mission you know what i'm saying save the people in order to not give up it uh per se so that's in that that's interesting to me that they kind of slid off them but they will be to me that is an important part of the plan in order to defeat ultron so you have ultron find the watcher and ends up the watcher who doesn't want to be interfered decides to like screw it throw hands he does something puts his armor on and the watcher is a very very powerful being so he's going hand to hand with um He's going he's going toe to toe with Ultron. But the, but the thing is, while they're fighting and they're traveling through diff different facets of the multiverse. Ultron is still able to use the stones 
and he's not getting any weaker. So this is like a a crazy like multi breaking multiverse breaking scene because when it seems like every time Ultron is punching the washer, they're ending up in like a different version of where they're at. Whether it's like a, a, a Earth populated by scrolls. Um, I think there was a scene where like uh Captain America's being sworn in as the president. They're going through a bunch of different things. So that's interesting to me and what was going on with that. So I was totally 110% cool with that whole, whole, whole scene and what was going on. And then he literally has to go get like evil Stephen Strange and tells him that. And, and Stephen Strange makes him like he goes back to that universe that got destroyed and he makes him ask for help in order to get it done. I, I, he's either going to set up his multi, you know what I'm saying, multiversal Avengers or whatever and do that thing. But I think something that would be even cooler than that is like the possibility of the living tribunal. You know what I'm saying? Like like them, maybe maybe this this version of Dr. St uh, Dr. Strange, Supreme Sorcerer or what, whatever he's called, a uh, Sorcerer Supreme is is in order, is able to get in contact with the living tribunal or something like that. But because, uh, you know, they had little hints to the li living tribunal in different movies and different stuff, uh, whether it's staffs or or different things like that. So I'd, I'd be interested to see if that pops off. I really like the scope and the feel, everything that's going on, the importance of how the watcher feels. You know what I'm saying? He, he already felt important, but for Ultron to look at him, look down on him in his passiveness. You know what I'm saying? The fact that he just watched things happen and how Ultron wants all living things, you know what I'm saying, to be silenced, including the Watcher um, and the Watcher having to break his vows in order to be able to stop Ultron because Ultron is going to destroy everything, in, including him. You can't just watch that um, might be the them getting us ready for what's going to happen with the eternals and them you know what i'm saying keeping they vows or whatever so what do you guys think go ahead and put that in the comments below i can't wait for the finale next i think it's next week i'm pretty sure it's next week i can't wait for the finale i can't wait to sit here and discuss it with y'all might be live i'm gonna talk to adam and see how we want to do that um this was great this was great this was great. Don't forget to follow us everywhere. You see it all in the corners at A Plus Opinions, at Nerd Mix Alpha. But I'm going to let Adam tell you guys about the Patreon, and I'm going to get up out of here. I'll speak to you guys soon. Indy, out. If you enjoy our content and want to be a part of helping our channel grow, become a patron supporter. We have affordable tiers to choose from that offer a variety of exclusive and early access content. From audio files for all of our shows for you to enjoy on the road, access to our Discord community, and plenty of reactions, reviews, character breakdowns, and more. Check us out at patreon.com slash A plus opinions. And as always, remember, like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so anytime we drop a brand new video, you will be notified.